welcome back to Saving Throw. Last episode, we started creating Ben's new character, Garthok. So far, we know he is a dwarf and he enjoys the taste of grain alcohol. So our next step is selecting Garthok's class, which is basically determining what role he'll be with within his adventuring party. In Pathfinder, there are 11 classes. Those are Barbarian, Bard, Cleric, Druid, Fighter, Monk, Paladin, Ranger, Rogue, Sorcerer, and Wizard. They are covered in chapter three of the rule book, starting on page 28. But I don't know how to, wait, that's not true. Tyler! <laughs> any race can pick any class, so you could potentially have a tiny little halfling barbarian or a hulking half-orc rogue. Feel free to mix it up. So, what's it gonna be, tough guy? I don't know. Is ninja a class? Uh, n no, not in the core rule book, and we already listed the options. And I have no idea. Okay, we should probably describe the classes then. Right. Uh, are we gonna do that weird split thing again? Nah, it's okay. I have a better idea. But first, I think we should adjourn to the character generation station. Oh. That transfer effect is gonna be pretty cool, right, Don? You got it, dude. <laughs> Good man. So you've got your character voice down, and that's great. But today we need you to practice your cool fantasy voice. Deploying your cool fantasy voice is an integral part of any fantasy RPG, especially when you're describing something. I've been using this voice for most of my life, so I will go first. The Barbarian. This tribal berserker fights with an otherworldly rage, clad in heavy fur covering thick, corded muscles. As a barbarian grows in power, he can channel this rage to become an unstoppable killing machine. Damn, son, that was tight! I got next. Jack of all trades, master of none, the bard is versed in the art of the arcane, the art of the blade, and the art of deception. Her musical talents can inspire allies, charm strangers, terrify enemies, and can eventually stop her enemies heart cold. I want to do one. All right. Are you sure you're ready for it? <clears throat> I've never been more ready in my life. All right. The cleric. The cleric guys are the ones who use spells to heal. They can cast spells. Wait, I already said that. Another thing they do is channel energy, but I don't know what that means. I think it has something to do with their spell casting, which I already mentioned. Not bad. We gave you a tough one. Clerics worship deities, which give them power over certain domains. Those domains grant powers and determine what spells they can cast. The gods and domains are listed on page 43 of the rulebook. Oh, God. <clears throat> Talking is hard. Yeah, it is. It's all right. But we're going to burn through these next ones real quick. Amy, you like druids. I do. Why, why don't you go next? Disciple of the tree, master of the bush, mother of nature. The druid is a goddamn hippie with magic powers. She can talk to animals, talk to plants, she gets an animal companion, and eventually she can transform into an animal herself, like a friggin' lion or a bear. Druids are awesome. Okay, so we're getting a little loose, huh? I, I can get loose. Let your hair down, Van Norman. All right, done and done. Grunt, soldier, man in arms, the fighter is a professional warrior. No friends, no flash, no gimmicks. Clad in a heavy iron shell, the fighter takes his sport onto the front line and through deadly martial skill, rains steel death upon his enemies. Monks are the mystic warriors of the Pathfinder universe. Incredibly disciplined, their bodies are weapons deadlier than the sharpest blade. Eschewing armor, monks rely on speed and the control of a mystic force known as Ki to protect themselves. Basically, monks are Bruce Lee. The gods of Pathfinder need divine warriors to destroy the enemies of faith. These men and women are paladins, natural leaders, holy warriors, and compassion beacons of morality and justice. Paladins channel the fervor of their god to protect the weak and destroy the wicked. I got next. All Do right. it. Do it. <clears throat> okay, rangers. Rangers are like druids, except they use swords instead of spells, but I mean, they do learn spells eventually, but just not right away. They love nature, and they're good at finding tracks and hiding in the woods and stuff. Aragorn was a ranger, so yeah, just think about that. Not bad. <clears throat> I got into another one. Oh, okay, just jumped the line, I guess. Jeez. Uh, 
rogues are thieves who steal stuff and sneak around and stab people in the back and shit. Boom, son! Okay, okay, <laughs> right, we'll, we'll take the last two. Yeah. Uh, Amy, uh, you want to go first? I do. Some magic users learn their craft. Some are literally born with magic coursing through their veins. Those men and women are sorcerers. Sorcerers have innate arcane sensibilities that manifest in unique and sometimes bizarre ways thanks to their bloodline, which is the thrumming source of their mystic powers. Nothing says fantasy more than the wizard. Students of the arcane, they spend their lives studying and attempting to control the otherworldly forces of magic. Every wizard selects schools of magic, be they deceptive schools of illusion, or beguiling schools of enchantment, or the vile school of necromancy. Wizards dedicate their lives to gaining more and more powerful magic until they either master them, or are consumed by them. Well, that was exhausting. Ben, how about it? What appeals to you? This is a pretty big decision, huh? Well, yes and no. Every time you gain a level of experience, you can pick a different class. So, if you pick a fighter, and for whatever reason that fighter wanted to learn how to cast Fireball, he could take a break from bashing goblin skulls and spend some time getting friendly with a spellbook. And eventually, after you've gained enough levels and met the prerequisites, you can even start leveling up in prestige classes. But I wouldn't worry about those now. It's time for you to pick your first level class. Okay, so I don't think I want to bother with spells. Garthog is just here to smash faces and wreck throats! Sounds like you want either a fighter or a barbarian, right? E yeah, well, I, I think loincloths are just really impractical, so I choose fighter. All right. Great! Fighter it is! Yeah. Do you want that as your favored class, too? Mm, favorite for what now? Okay, so when you create a character, you have to pick at least one favored class. That means that every time you gain a level in your favored class, you can choose to get an additional skill rank or an additional hit point. It's covered on page 31 of the core rulebook. Usually it's the class you pick at first level, but it doesn't have to be. Okay, I don't really know what that means, so I think I'll just pick Fighter as my favorite class. Probably a good idea. Yeah. Garthog stands nobly at the edge of consciousness, squaring off against the demons raging within his broken soul. He's spent his life trying to drown them in a flood of strong spirits when, through the haze of his addiction, he hears the call to adventure. Terrified of living an unremarkable existence, he answers the call. He grabs his father's rusted battle axe, dented armor, and a half-empty wine cask. He leaves the insignificant farm village of his birth to seek a life of adventure and glory! <clears throat> better? Better. Better. Much better. All right, so the last thing we need to do in this episode is to pick your alignment. Oh boy, more decisions. <laughs> Hell yes. Much has been written about alignment, first made popular by Dungeons and Dragons. You can find countless charts that explore different personalities that fit in different alignments, such as... Basically, in Pathfinder, you get to choose from a grid of nine different alignment types. These have two aspects of every alignment, and the first is an aspect in whether your character is good, neutral, or evil. Those are self-explanatory. The other aspect of alignment is your character's feelings on order versus anarchy. You choose whether your character is lawful, neutral, or chaotic. So the nine choices are lawful good, neutral good, chaotic good, Lawful neutral, neutral, chaotic neutral, lawful evil, neutral evil, and chaotic evil. Well, I think Garthok is generally a good person, but very free spirited. Sounds like chaotic good to me, yeah? Bingo! <laughs> Perfect. Looks like we're plumb out of time. If you liked what you saw in this video, like, comment, and subscribe. If you didn't like what you saw, we're really sorry you have such unrealistic standards. Maybe take a long look in the mirror and examine what went wrong in your own life. So join us next time when we flesh out Garthok even more and assign ability scores. Flesh. Gross. Until then, we are Saving Throw and... Less Dungeon!